Hello, my name is Luca, and today I'll be speaking about iOS app modularization. So firstly, let's introduce uh, the sample project that we are going to modularize today. As you can see, it is pretty simple. It only has two modules. It's the login module and the home module. Uh, and it's also called TV shows. Uh, don't be worried. Everything that you are going to learn uh, with this simple project will apply for large production projects as well. So what is unmonolithic architecture? Well, it's basically when you have the entirety of the application contained in only one module. Also, something that is common for monoliths is that they have only one test target. What's the problem with the monolithic architecture? Well, basically, for the initial scope, nothing. It seems quite appropriate, and the architecture seems really fine, and you can structure it in a clean manner. But as time passes, it can get really difficult to maintain that clean structure. Also, additions to the project can be really hard to implement because, hey, look at this. This is an example of uh, one of our production projects before we modularized it. Uh, this is the state when it was a monolith. And as you can see, there's a ton of modules and there's a ton of dependencies between them. Uh, some of them are even, are even circular, which can cause uh, some issues uh, in the future. Let's introduce the modular architecture. So as you can see, this is the architecture that we are going to implement for the TV shows application today. Uh, as you can see, it only has three layers, but don't worry. Uh, it will be just enough to illustrate the point, the, how modularization works. An important note is also that on our production project, we didn't have only three layers. We had more layers because it made uh, business sense to include them. But for illustration purposes, this will be more than enough. So let's dive into the layers. So firstly, we have the app layer, which is basically called TV shows, and it's our main application. Uh, it will be the place where all of the modules will come together. Also, uh, the main application will hold all of the project resources. Then we have the feature layer. And as you can see, there is only one dependency. So the app main uh, application will depend only on the feature layer. And there is no circular dependency back to, the, uh, back to the main application. The feature layer is called TV show screen modules because it will, it will uh, keep all of our screens. So the login screen and the home screen. Also you can see that we have an independent uh, test target for the TV show screen modules layer. Then we have the core layer, and it's basically all of the code that is sh shared between all of the screens. So it's like some kind of utilities, some kind of extensions, UI components, some shared models, and some networking code, and other shared code, basically. Also, as you can see, we have a, a test target that is uh, independent for the core layer. Uh, this is called a horizontal architecture because every single layer is at its own level of abstraction. So we have screens, and it only has the screens. It doesn't have anything else. You have the core layer, all the shared code, and nothing else. Another approach would be to Im implement a vertical modular architecture. Here, you would have like vertical layers, and each of the layers would be a specific feature of the application. So here, in the TV shows application, we would have a login layer and a home layer. And now the biggest difference is that these vertical layers need to have all of the code that is needed to run them. So they need to be fully self-contained. So as you can see, each of them need to have their own resources. Each of them need to have their own core code, so their own extensions. What does this mean? This means that we don't have any shared uh, part of the application where we can just import the shared part. So we need to duplicate the code between the modules. And I really don't like this approach. but Thankfully, we can go with a hybrid approach. <laughs> and this is actually the most similar to the version of the modularization that we went through on our production project. So you have the main application. Again, it's the same as we had on the horizontal modular architecture. And then we just changed uh, the screens modules layer. So we basically stripped it down to multiple vertical layers now. So it now has only the login, the home, and all of the other features. And now they can depend on the core layer, and there is no need to duplicate the code. And in my opinion, this is awesome. But now, let's get our hands dirty, and let's try to implement the modularization using Cocoa Pods. Firstly, we need to start by adding a podspec file to your project repository. As you can see, we started with TV show score, because it makes the most sense. And you might ask yourself, what is a podspec file? 
Well, it's basically a configuration file for the pod that you're going to use in development. It's, it specifies how your pod will look like. And here it is. As you can see, there is a ton of stuff here. And from now on, you should focus on basically the red boxes because they are something that is important. It's important for an understanding. The other stuff is either boilerplate code that you can just copy and paste or is something that we already went through. So it's no point of looking at it. So we need to, when you specify your module, you need to specify also its sub-modules. So as you see, saw on a uh, few slides earlier, we had utilities inside of TV show score. And it's basically a sub-module, yeah. And for each sub-module, for each sub-spec, you need to define, define all of its dependencies. And as you can see here, there are RX Swift, RX Ukoa, and so on. Also, in order for the structure to be visible inside of your project, you need to define all of your source files for that sub-module. Then, something that I also added is, uh, because you can define all of your source files, you can also include an entire folder. But something from that folder can be included already in some other sub-module. For example, here we had the UI storyboard extension which is already present in the utilities because the utilities holds all of, uh, the, all of the extensions. But now we need to exclude it, exclude it from the Viper module because if we include it in the Viper module, we'll have the duplication of files and we don't want that because our code won't run. And also, as you can see on the bottom, we provided a test pack and test pack is basically the place where you write all of the source files for your tests. Uh, something that is cool about test spec is that you can actually nest it inside of a sub spec so you can have even more granularity with your tests. But for now on, this will be enough. Then we do the same for TV show screen modules. So we just create a pod spec file. And now the biggest difference is that we added a common sub module. The common sub-module won't be a sub-module per se because it won't be included inside of the project structure. It won't be included inside of the project structure because it doesn't have any source files. So it's nothing to, there's nothing to add there. But it will be really cool because we'll use it as a common dependency uh, between all of our screens. So you can see now we can put in login, home, and so on, just that we have the dependency of the common module. What do we do now? Well, we implemented our pod spec files. We need to edit our pod file now. So as you can see, this is the pod file before the modularization. It's pretty straightforward, business as usual, as we would said. say. It has all of our dependencies, and that's it. But now we need to add our uh, local, uh, local pods. And you just do this by providing a, a path to your pod spec files, and that's it. And also, don't forget to include the test specs, because we'll need them to uh, create new test targets. OK, we just run pod install. And are we finished? Nope. So we need to go to the main application and go through all of the files. And inside of your Excel project, you need to remove references to them. Because they will now be included inside of your development pods. And you don't want to have them duplicated. So yeah, this will be a lot of work. But you need to do it. And also. Uh, be aware that you don't put your files into trash because they will put them inside of your uh, endless void of the bin if you don't recycle the bin. <laughs> uh, okay, so we did it and we have our desired architecture and look at it. It looks pretty beautiful now. You have the TV shows which is basically the main application and it's completely stripped down to only a few files. You have the application folder which includes just the launch screen. It includes just the app delegate and the resources. And in the side of the development pods, we have the desired structure. And it looks great. Well, we have a problem. Inside of the app delegate, uh, as you can see, it cannot find the login wireframe. Well, it's pretty, pretty straightforward why you can't find it. It's because it's in a different module. OK, it seems like a pretty simple solution. We just need to import TV show screen modules, and everything will work. But no. Uh, why won't it work? It's because the login wireframe isn't public. OK, so now we need to make login wireframe public. S simple. But as you can see, login wireframe is a subclass of base wireframe. And base wireframe will be included inside of TV show score, inside of that module. So we need to import TV show score here. 
and go inside of that and make it open because we want to make subclasses of it. Uh, if we don't want to make subclasses, it's fine to just keep it pu public. And as you can see, uh, to modularize a really big production project, it takes a lot of time. And a lot of just putting like public and open modifiers, like a few weeks of just putting public modifiers, and it's really hell. And believe me when I said, when I saw Build Succeeded, it's, it was one of my happiest moments of my life. <laughs> but that happiness didn't last really long, because when the app opened, uh, it crashed on startup. Uh, why did that happen? It's basically because the story build files need to be in, uh, they aren't in the main bundle anymore. And in each er reference where we uh, try to reference the wireframe, uh, the storyboard, uh, it's not in the correct bundle. So now we need to go through the whole application and s switch it to the correct bundle. And this didn't fix the issue because now we need to go through all of the storyboard files and provide a correct module for each and every subclass uh, of uh, any UI kit subclass that you have. But when you finish with that, the blows will just keep on coming because now the images won't work. You won't see any image on your screen. And yeah, this is another reminder that you need to set all of your images through code because then you won't have this issue. Uh, inside of our storyboards, so we basically, on our production project, we set all of our images through storyboard. And yeah, not good. <laughs> but uh, uh, the reason why the issue is happening is because the resources, the images, need to be in the same bundle as the bundle that your storyboard is located in. And how to fix that? Well, there could be multiple solutions. You can just strip down, you can just like move all of your resources in the correct bundles, but we didn't decide to do that because the, the project is uh, set up like that all of the layers basically need all of the resources because a lot of them are really shared between the project. So we couldn't do that. Another approach would be, okay, let's go through the whole application and move uh, the image setting with code, but we didn't have time to do that. And we came up with a kind of hacky but workable solution. <laughs> and it's just by providing an IB inspectable property. So we just can go uh, through all of the storyboard files. And since you already have the image view and you already have the image set, you can just copy and paste it inside of this IB inspectable property. And now what will it do? It will just basically uh, try to find uh, the image inside of the main bundle and then send it to the image view. And actually, believe it or not, but this makes our app work and we're done. But uh, don't, uh, let's get, don't get uh, too much ahead of ourselves because we still need to set up our test targets. So before we had just one test target and now we need to delete it from our schemes because we don't long, won't longer use it because uh, all of the test files are now moved in separate modules. So okay, firstly we'll remove them and now we'll just need to add the TV shows core unit tests and TV shows screen modules unit tests. And we're done with the tests. So now we saw how to implement modularization with Cocoa Pods, and let's see how uh, different it is to implement with SPM. And spoiler alert, it's a lot simpler. <laughs> so step one would be to create just a packages directory where you, where you are going to hold all of your uh, custom packages. After that, you go to Xcode and just go to create new package and provide an appropriate name. In this case, again, TV shows core. And when you create it, you'll get this package.svit file, which is now a configuration file for our uh, package. And we need to make sure that we provide the correct platform for each and every package because we want them to keep consistent, be consistent between all of them so our code works. And also, the same as before, we need to add our dependencies to the package. And they are the same as they were when we implemented it co 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 pods. Uh, also, something that is uh, nice about SPM is that you get the test target for free, so you don't need to do anything regarding that. Uh, okay, now we just add this package to the project repository, and we add it as a local package. And we basically uh, just do the same, all, all of the same things for the TV show screen modules. And now, as the dependencies, we just need to write TV show score because it will just depend on TV show score, and that's it. 
OK, and now you'll get the desired structure. And we just need to drag and drop all of the project files to the desired package until you get the wanted structure. So you don't need to delete or delete the references to all of the files. You can just drag and drop it and make it look as you want it to. And it's pretty great. Uh, also, an important note is that uh, with Swift Package Manager, all of the issues that we had before remain the same because, yeah, you still need to provide all of the public and open modifiers. You still need to uh, implement the storyboard handling and so on. But now let's talk some numbers. So the estimation for this whole <laughs> Motorization was 296 hours, and really kudos to the person who uh, did the <laughs> estimations because we all are pretty close. Uh, we did it in 292 hours, so the client can spare four extra hours for something else. Uh, yeah, so this really isn't a decision that you can make overnight. It's a ton of work, and was it worth it? Well, we got a much cleaner structure and a more maintainable project. Uh, we have less merge conflicts. Uh, it's easier to add new features. And also, there are no circular dependencies anymore. And in my opinion, it was sure as hell worth it. Uh, also, something that is really interesting with uh, the modularization is, as everybody knows, naming is the hardest part of programming. Uh, so here's an example how it saved us. So, uh, we, had, we have a project which has a ton of different versions of the same screen. So we have basically a pay, choose payment option view controller. And you have it for like five features because the client wants it to be like completely different in every situation. And how did we handle that? Well, basically we just added the feature prefix to denote which feature it belongs to. This was really ugly and it caused a lot of Swift Lint uh, warnings. <laughs> So yeah, uh, it's not really good. But now we can just provide like one name, like just choose payment option view controller, and then you can just import the module that you want, like the feature that you want it to be in. And that's pretty amazing. Also, so here's the sample project. If you want to play with it, uh, you can scan the QR code. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's really neat. It has all of the. Uh, it has the version with SPM, with Cocoa pods, and with the monolithic architecture. So it's, it can be. You can le le really learn from it. Okay. Are there any questions? Brane. Did you compare uh, build times? Uh, yeah, actually, before we had really fast build time, so it didn't really affect us much. So we didn't like, well, we had it like in, before it was like in 10 seconds, and now it's like around 10. <laughs> not, not, not sure, but it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty fast either way. So. Yep. Uh, on your production project, uh, did you use dependency injection? Yes. Uh, was it hard to uh, inject uh, objects from the module you are depending on? Yeah, and that's a lot of work that went into it, maybe because we really needed to do and go like and really make sure that we are doing it correct and we don't uh, cause another like circular dependencies and so on. But yes, it was. And yeah, it took a lot of the development hours. That was one of the problems also, yeah. Until. Yeah, uh, so you said that uh, you have less merge conflict. So. Oh. Yep, because now each developer can work on its own like uh, module, and that's it. Basically, you don't work on the whole project. You can work on another project, and then you are adding a new controller. We'll get a merge conflict in the. Yes, but that's not the feature if you can still have like monolithic if you have like a single package and everything in it, you, you won't have that. Uh, I mean, you may have a monolithic project as, as a package. Yes, as a single package. Then okay, also, so, yeah, that's true. So I don't know how you have less much of Because probably it was the XO project usually. Yeah, yeah XO project. Yeah, but that, that's yep. owned by SPM, not mobilization. <laughs> but yep. okay. Yeah, you get it from. Yeah. Josip. Uh, what about uh, linking? Did you, did you stick with uh, dynamic linking or did you choose static linking for something? Yep. And what are the pros and cons? Yeah, Josip, excellent question. So, 
<laughs> so <laughs> this, this is just an internal joke, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so basically uh, with uh, static linking, something uh, there can come up a problem because uh, what problem can uh, become? Because uh, when you use static linking, all of the code from other uh, modules will be included inside of your executable. And during the linking phase, uh, an issue can happen. It's called a duplicate classes issue, where basically you have the situation where, let's for example envision that we have like module A and module B. And they have the same uh, name of the class. And now, in, during the linking phase, it, it will be ambiguous which, which one will uh, it look up to. And if you use dynamic linking, uh, then you won't have this problem, because then it will be uh, done inside when, in the runtime, where it can just access the reference to the correct uh, object that it needs to use. And uh, inside of uh, Coopods, uh, we used like we put like use framers, and for that reason we used dynamic linking, uh, and we didn't have this issue. But if you use SPM, which by default uses static linking, uh, yeah, it will be a huge problem for you because you'll need to provide like you will need to find some kind of solution. Uh, you can put dependencies inside C package manager as dynamic, but then again, it really depends on the. Uh, the package that you are importing. So yeah, that is also uh, an issue that can, that can happen. Sir. Um, so if you're using uh, dynamic frameworks, and that means that the runtime, the start of the time of the app will be long, right? Because it needs to do, uh, because of the dynamic framework. Yep. Yeah, it, it was it was already pretty fast, so it didn't really make a difference to us. But yeah, that that's a good point. I mean, we tried it out a few weeks ago on the project with around eight dependencies and it frameworks, and the start of time is around eight hundred milliseconds. Yeah, yeah it's the nearest iPhone. Yeah, I I see the dependency to iPhone S is around three seconds. Three seconds, yes, but iPhone fourteen Pro is like three hundred, four hundred milliseconds. Okay. Are there any more questions? How do you solve this modularization test to the client? Three hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, that that was the that was <laughs> that was the biggest work, working uh, problem. <laughs> well, basically, we had a uh, kind of a. Uh, stale point at the project. We didn't have any new features, and we didn't know when the new features will come up to uh, come up. And the project, uh, the product owner was like, "Oh, I don't really need any maintenance work," and we were like, "Really." I was like really passionate to include this because I was really bored, as Christian was, to work on this project where there aren't any uh, additions. And yeah, it's just out of boredom. I really forced the client to. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I provided like some the the stuff that we uh, had the benefits with. Uh, I basically presented that we'll have all of these benefits, and it really makes sense for our project because the client has two applications and it can also make sense that we can reuse some of the some of the packages that we build between the projects and that was the biggest selling point to them <laughs> good job thanks